Alright, all right, all right. we're back. Praise be to Allah and grateful, thankful to be before you. Um, we never take time lightly. We never take opportunities, you know, lightly. So we're thankful that Allah bless us all to be here. So because of the topics that we have to cover, this is part two to Did Jesus Teach Islam? We want to jump right into it and move quickly because it's such a, a timely message. So we open up in our greeting and we open up in the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. We thank him, Almighty God Allah, for sending us Abraham, sending us Moses in the Torah, Jesus in the Gospel. And we thank him for sending, of course, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him. We thank Allah for all of his worthy servants and messengers and prophets. But because of what the time is today, and because of the God that we serve and worship, we most of all thank Allah for continuing with his love, mercy, and guidance and raising up for us here in America, the wilderness of North America. We thank him for raising up a divine leader, teacher, and guide, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we can never thank him enough for the lessons and the teachings and the life that he gave us. But even more, than Allah just sending us a Christ figure. He also sent us the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to continue in that way of divinity and in that way of expressing beneficence and ultimate love of God. We thank Allah for raising him up, for the messenger, raising him up and turning him into himself for us and making him his Holy Spirit that's in our midst today to guide us into all truth. So it's in their names that we once again greet you with the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace. In the Arabic language we say, Assalamu Alaikum. All right, what we wanna to do today is continue with part two and where we left off before with the groundwork, you know, by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, Allah, Allah bless me to be able to set the groundwork. And what we're gonna to do today, cause we're in my manners, I wanna digress for a minute. I just wanna let you know who's looking at me. So if you see my eyes all over the place, we have my brother Nasir, my young brother here. And we have my son, who is the mastermind behind all of this, brother Jabril. And of course, at any minute, any moment, you can always ask questions and you know what I mean? Add if you want, because we don't believe in scripted, you know, layouts and stuff like that. We believe that we we need to just go ahead and lean on the, the anointing and have Allah God, uh, you know, use us. And when you have a pure heart, it's all good. Whatever comes out is guidance. Whatever comes out is, is, is words that will elevate our understanding. And that's what we do. So to get back to what uh, we were dealing with, we were talking about interpretation and after we laid the, the groundwork with the first video we dealt with the obvious we dealt with things like you know without backtracking too much we dealt with things like Jesus uh, coming into a room and when he came into the, to the room the Bible says that he actually said peace be unto you and uh, of course Jesus didn't need pork chops <laughs> so according to the scriptures you can't find nowhere in the Bible where you see Jesus with a pork chop in his mouth he ate fish he asked his disciples to go fish and when they couldn't catch fish he said go pull out your net get rid of that little fishing rod and get your net so they pulled out the net and they couldn't catch too much fish so he said take thy net and cast it on the right side and they were able to get a bunch of fish and then they broke it up when they got back you know so we know Jesus ate fish. So we basically stopped at Jesus saying, Assalamu alaikum. That's in the book of John, chapter 20, verse 21. 
John chapter 20, verse 26, and John 14, 27. Peace be unto you. And in the Arabic language, because English is a brand new language, in the Arabic language it would be peace be unto you. So, what we're going to do now is deal with the questions, you know, pretty soon we're going to have this live. That's going to be really good when we can have the Facebook live. But until then, we'll just deal with what we're dealing with right now. You know what I mean? And trying to answer as many questions as we can. And trying to touch every base that needs to be touched. So at this uh, moment, we're going to go into a, some words that pretty much create division. You know what I mean? Somewhat like a question that somebody would, might have. People want to know who study scripture. If the chosen people were from Abraham through Isaac and or through Abraham with his wife Sarah who gave birth to Isaac. Not Abraham's other wife, Hagar, who gave birth to Ishmael. Now the reason those two men are very important is because Ishmael represents the Muslims. Isaac represents the Jews and Christians. So it's through the Jews and the Christians that the Bible says these are the chosen people. But the Muslims were like Allah God putting the Muslims on ice because he blessed them with the land. You know what I mean? So they got Arabia. They got Mecca, the Holy Lands. But the actual blessing went to the chosen people. And that was Isaac and Jacob and his lineage. But Jesus said in Matthew 21, when he was talking to the Jews, he charged them with being murderers of all the prophets. So God would send them prophets and they would not follow the prophets. They would murder the prophets. That's Matthew 23 that he charged them with that. But Matthew 21, he says, God will take the kingdom from whom he pleases and give it to another who will bear his fruits. So that's where the Muslims come in. With all the prophets that went to the Jews and all the prophets that went to the Christians or the apostles that went to the Christians, Allah sent Muhammad to the Muslims, one man. And no matter how good or bad they are, they accepted Muhammad and they never, not only they didn't kill him, but they, they tried to the best of their ability to follow him to the letter. So that was bearing fruit, good fruit. And just like what Jesus was saying through Paul, the Bible says in Christ there's no bond, no free, no male, no female, no Jew, no Greek, dealing with race. All are one in Christ. In that same spirit, Islam comes on the scene because the Holy Prophet did not teach on race in that way. You know what I mean? He taught on race when he talked about open enemies. Follow not the footsteps of your open enemy. Follow not the footsteps of the devil. Jesus said, ye are not of your father. Ye are not. God is not your father. Ye are of your father, the devil. John 8, 44. So these, this is the language uh, that the prophets use, but it's not necessarily saying black or white. So the Bible uses uh, language like that. The wicked seed of Cain, Matthew 23, or the righteous seed of Abel. See what I'm saying? You, I don't know if you know about the uh, Jacob and no, 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 the Cain and Abel story. Is it uh, Abel still something? Well, Abel gave God an offering, oh. and Cain gave God an offering, and God liked Abel's offering, didn't like Cain's offering. He gets he gets jealous of his brother, and he slew his brother. Oh, yeah, the Cain and Abel story. So Cain kills his brother from pure jealousy. Oh. You know what I mean? So Jesus touches on not only Cain, but the lineage of Cain. So Cain is a bloodline, a wicked bloodline. So what we say in the nation of Islam is you have some people who are wicked by nature, and then you have some people who are righteous by nature. And the way you can tell the difference between the two is what they do easily. See, when you have a righteous nature don't mean you always walk around doing everything right. None is righteous, no, not one. It just means that when you do wickedness, 
it really rips you up. You know what I mean? And when you do righteousness, it feels like second nature. You know what I mean? But if you're a person who has a wicked nature, when you do something uh, wicked, it does nothing. It doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't bother you at all. It's, you, it's, you have no conscience. You know what I mean? You don't feel any regret. And we have a race of people on our planet that's like that. And nobody wants to touch on it. They want to make it seem like we're all the same because you can hide like that. But it's a serious problem with any race that can do what they did to us in this country for 400 years. That's a problem. How are you able to commit a crime against humanity called chattel slavery? Taking a human being that you look up to and reducing him down to a level that's less than beast because it was always animal cruelty rights. <laughs> but it was no, so you couldn't just kill an animal like that. You know what I mean? You couldn't be cruel to certain animals like dogs and cats and raccoons. Yes. But you could kill a slave and get away with it. Certain masters, slave masters, were so wicked that if you went to their plantation, on the way to the plantation, you would see dead slaves on the side of the road. That's our history. You know? So, what makes a people like that? So we want to attempt to go into that. And by Allah's permission, we'll be able to get a lot of questions answered and cover a lot of ground. You know, so the Bible won't say white person. The Bible won't say black person. These are English words. So what does the Bible say? You know what I mean? It gives you, it, Jesus might talk about something that has two different natures. He might say the sheep. He might say the goat. It's two different natures. The goat has horns. He's aggressive. The sheep does not attack anybody. That's why you can count sheep. Because you're not afraid that he's going to do something to you. Jesus uses the weeds. He uses the goats. No, no, I'm sorry. He uses weeds and he uses wheat. If you grow a plant to get wheat, you want wheat bread, you plant seed, you get a weed, a, a wheat plant. It's just like any other plant. Roses, daisies, it's a natural plant. You plant the seed. It's a peaceful plant. It's not trying to hurt anything. But then, out of nowhere, weeds grow up that you didn't plant no seed for that. And the first thing those weeds do is what? Attack the plant. <laughs> two plants, two different natures. See what I'm saying? So interpretation is very, very important. Like I have it on the wall, it says a lot of God's interpretation is imperative. So it is imperative that we know these things so we can have a thorough knowledge of self. A thorough knowledge of God and a thorough knowledge of our enemy because when you have those three things that is salvation see what I'm saying it's not dealing with religion because you can have a religion and not have a thorough knowledge of those three things not what you're working with how can you be saved if you don't know where the harm is coming from you don't know where to guard how to guard yourself from the ones who want to take you out of here see salvation is when you have all your faculties in order so the first word we want to deal with that's on this board and give the scriptures to and go over the scriptures and then we'll close up. The first word we want to deal with is what the Bible refers to Europeans as. The word Gentile. Definition of Gentile, right? Gentiles, according to scripture, is really dealing with lawless people who are disconnected from a lot. So that's the opposite definition mm -hmm. of gentle, or you tell me I'm that is act, that that's the actual. Let's look it up. But th that's not the actual definition, but that's the interpretation. Mm -hmm. When you see the word gentile, you're dealing with a lawless person mm -hmm. who's been disconnected from God. So you, in, in that sense, you can be a gentile in your mind, even though your skin is black. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with nationality, gentile represents. Um, Europeans who are non-Jewish. So when it says there's no Jew, no Greek. See, the Greeks were Gentiles. The Romans were Gentiles. That's Europe. But then you have the Jewish people who are connected to the Semitic tribes. And this is where black people are. 
or even semis or semites, Semitic people, meaning half. You know what I mean? People who mixed with the original people. So of course that would make them original people. You look at Barack Obama, his mother's white, his father's, his, his father's white, his mother's black, but he's black. So, you know, in the beginning, when race mixing began, mm, and I'm going to have to go there, you know, because race mixing started in this chapter right here. It's, it goes right to the scriptures, but again, interpretation, and that's what this video is dealing with. Not necessarily religion, but we did, still dealing with, did, did Jesus teach Islam? When he says, your father is the devil, well, that's what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, and he taught us into Islam. But the universal side of Islam, and that's why I can sit here, all praise is due to Allah, and read out of both books. Because God is the author of both books. But here it is, uh, Genesis chapter 6. It says, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Verse 2 says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives of all which they chose. Now, there's so much in that. Because first of all, you got to identify who are the sons of God. Who are the children of God? Who are the people of God? It's the original people that God made. Everybody wants to know where the white people come from. Some people say it was migration theory. You know what I mean? They have theories of where Europeans come from. But nobody tries to figure out where black people come from. You know where you came from. God called you out of the earth. Who's your father? God is our father. He formed us from the dust of the ground, breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. We became living souls. Now where did white people come from? See, now you got all these theories. Same thing as where the weeds come from. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't know where the weeds come from. I planted, I wanted some daisies. I took a daisy seed and put it in the earth, watered it. I got my daisies, hickam weeds, where it come from. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus is heavy. And his parables and metaphors are heavy. So it says here again, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives of all which they chose. Sons of God is, an, is, is a group of people who saw the daughters of men. That's another group of people. You know what I mean? It didn't say the sons of God saw the daughters of God. It said the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and check this out, that they were fair, right? And took them to be wives. Now watch this. What is the definition of fair? As an adjective, it means in accordance with the rules or standards. Legitimate. Do you want to hear the next one? Okay. So fair. Oh, man. There's a bunch of definitions. A bunch of definitions. Now, here's it says the noun, right? The archaic definition says... A beautiful, a beautiful woman. Now that's so much foul play in that. A beautiful woman is fair. So, so what's a, a un ugly woman? I, and you know, it says a beautiful woman, but it also says a light-skinned person. It says you know, of a, of hair or complexion, light. So one definition is a light-skinned person and the other definition is a pretty person. So what's up with <laughs> You know what I mean? Now both definitions are archaic definitions and we're in Genesis, so this is the archaic section of the Bible. It's the oldest part. You know what I mean? So fair means light or white. So the, children, the sons of God had to be dark. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they weren't so fair, I guess. But the original people saw these new people that they were fair and took them to be wives. Now we're going to go to the next verse. It says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. 
yet his days shall be 120 years, right? And it just goes into something different, but we're, gonna, we're not going to go into that. We'll catch that another time, but that's more interpretation because it said that these two people, this is really going to blow your mind, got together and made giants. Now, of course, we know it ain't no such thing as Jolly Green Giants. So what is it talking about? People of great stature. And all through the scriptures, it's breaking it down like that. When Europeans sometimes see us, and people like Shaquille O'Neal, and you know what I mean? They look at him and say, that man, that's, that's a giant. But he's a man of great stature. So getting back on track, Gentiles would be Europeans who are non-Jewish. Jew would be the people of color. They flip it around and make it look like you have a small little group of Jews and then the rest of the world is supposed to be Gentiles. That's the trick. See what I'm saying? So, since G Gentiles spiritually are, are people who are lawless and who have been de disconnected from Allah, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. Matthew 6, 32. We're going to have to step on it. Because me and Jabril got to the point where we're not really trying to do videos too long because he said a lot of times people can't really keep their attention. You know what I mean? I think it's all that pork <laughs> that we eat. You know what I mean? We can kind of have a, we can focus a lot more when we leave that, that swine alone. You know what I mean? When we keep that swine off our minds, and keep that pork off our fork. We can focus. Right. So, Matthew 6, 32. It says, well, I started 31. <clears throat> it hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, Saving, oh no, 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 this is fine, you saw it, and you, I don't want you to cut none of this off, Jabril, keep it, keep it right there, okay, verse 31, it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, we were talking about that earlier, or what shall we drink, or where, uh, uh, where with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need in all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, when you free yourself, you know what I mean? But it's talking about a mindset. and we, I didn't even know that we were going to tie it up like that. When we came down here, the first thing we started talking about is what real success is. You know what I mean? And real success is when you have vision that you believe in and you work towards it and you focus on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And don't worry about all the things on the side. But when you're spiritual, you can see life the way you're supposed to. So the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness and everything else will be added to you. But the Gentiles don't think like that. The Gentiles say, get that money, man. Worry about that spiritual stuff later. You know what I mean? Talking all that spiritual stuff. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, it's all about dollars and cents. If you don't make no dollars, it don't make no sense. And when you start talking like that, even though you Jew, you know, Hebrew, Semitic, from the Semitic areas, right? Original man. You talking and thinking like a Gentile. And they are very materialistic. They judge you based on how much money you have. You walk into the room looking the way you look, they grab their pocketbook. But if they find out that you're Kevin Hart or Michael Jordan's nephew, now they change their whole attitude. You know what I mean? Based on some materialistic crap. So, we want to deal with a couple more scriptures. Uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 27. See, we had to get some notes for this one. That's why it took so long. Normally, you shoot from the hip. But when you're dealing with interpretation, you don't want to play around. <laughs> on top of the fact that I want to make a little public announcement... Uh, uh, that you can go on YouTube and you can YouTube Mas, Muhammad's Mas number 12 and all our videos is on there our student regional minister Rodney Muhammad 
Peace and blessings be upon you, Minister Rodney. Assalamu alaikum. He, we have a, a a Zoom town hall meeting, so you can look all into that. And we're on part two to dealing basically what we're dealing with right now: the Son of Man, notes on the Son of Man, uh, which is another way of saying Christ, the Son of Man. And we already did part one. That was November nineteenth, and part two is December seventeenth. So I want to just put that out there so everybody can stay tuned exercise that social media I know you know how to do it better than me but all you know all I got to do is put you, put it out there and I know you can jump right in on it okay so Acts 14 verse 27 my daughter used to have the videos with this popping up on the screen you know what I mean we not high tech like that yet shout out to sister Zariah love you and assalamu alaikum, sisters of Raya. Brothers always trying to correct us, you know, when I say, you know, that I love you, baby. Oh, we don't call that, we don't call that daughter's baby, but, <laughs> but you know what? We write in exact, you ain't no baby. But, um, verse 27, it says, I always like to go right before it. And thence sailed to Antioch, Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. Verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Beautiful. So God is fair, not the light, but just. And he's, he's fair and he's just. You know what I mean? God gives his word not just to the one group of people, two groups of people, but he offers his word to the whole human family. So when you get to the book of Acts or you get to the gospel, which starts in the book of uh, Malachi, uh, uh, Matthew. Jesus is starting off narrow like us in the nation of Islam. He's teaching his own people. And we could go there right now because it's not good to keep it out there and don't really prove it. Or he, te he taught just like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 says, These twelve, Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. There's that word again. Jesus is saying to his disciples, don't go in the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritan enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep that's in the house of Israel. See, identities. And when you read carefully, you can see identities lost in scripture. Is he telling his, is Jesus telling his disciples to go to Israel? Not necessarily. And that's one of our words up there. But he's saying go to the lost sheep that's in the house of Israel. You say, well, what's the difference? Oh, it's a major difference. You want to, and, and the best way I can prove it is with us in this room right now. We are, on paper, Americans. Right? Now, you know you ain't no American. Are you treated like an American? No. I can find some Americans that's more American than you. How is that so? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So we would be the children of America fighting to be Americans, fighting for freedom, fighting for justice, fighting for equality. You don't have those things because you're not American. You see what I'm saying? And since you can't come and go as you please and even think for yourself and have the everyday essentials of life, you are the children of America. So Jesus is saying, go to them. Don't go to America. Go to the children of America. Well, that's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying. Message to the black man in America. So I hope that's in the camera. You know what I mean? But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, right where I was just reading Matthew chapter 10, he said, go ye not in the way of the Gentiles, the Europeans who are non-Jewish, or in any city of the Samaritan, Enter ye not, those were the people who didn't mind mixing with other people. Go ye rather to the lost sheep 
that's in the house of Israel. Mm. We can keep going? Okay. Well, he said, and as ye go, this is verse 7, Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm, mm, mm. God is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. It says, verse 8, heal the sick. And then watch this one. Cleanse the lepers. Mm. We got to know what that means. That's one of my words up there. Leprosy. See, that's the second word. Look how God pulls this together. Cleanse the leper. Not, I mean, leprosy is dealing with skin disorder. Today, leprosy would be vitiligo. Michael Jackson was suffering from that. You know what I mean? Where your dark skin turns white. You know, and in Numbers chapter 12, Moses' sister was cursed with leprosy. And it says she was cursed or, or she was uh, became leper, le leprous white as snow. Leprous white as snow. Of course, when you have skin disorders, you, it's, it's like a bad sunburn. You know what I mean? Or sun poison for Europeans mainly. But you don't take somebody that has a sunburn and you wash that or cleanse that. That would be excruciating, right? So what is Jesus talking about? Because nobody cleanses that kind of skin disorder. It's talking about the mind that like we started off talking about the Gentiles. Do you think like a Gentile or do you think like a God? An original man. Ye are all God's children of the Most High God. Do you think like a Semitic human being? Do you eat like the chosen people of God? Or do you eat and think and live like the people who are not following God? You know what I mean? Like lawless people. So if you are a lawless human being, your mind would literally have to be washed. You know what I mean? If you're black with a white mind. Mm. So Jesus says, heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils freely, right? Then it says, freely ye receive, so freely give, right? So that's the, that's Jesus telling them to do that for their own people and then hear Paul or Jesus' disciples. You know what I mean? Peter and Paul and the rest of them, he told them to take the word to the Gentiles and preach to the whole world. It's only right. It only makes sense. God is an orderly God. So we're going to wrap this up, but I'm going to speed up and we just finish for the sake of time. And the new tape camera that we have. See, God is an orderly God. He does everything right and exact. If your house is nasty and dirty, it wouldn't make no sense for you to come over and clean my house. Clean our house. You will be a hypocrite. Clean your, fir your house first. Then you can come clean mine when you ain't got nothing to do at yours. So it was the same way with God raising up one from among our brother. God would raise up a prophet from among the people who were suffering. And that prophet's job was to teach those people how to get out of the slump that they're in. And then after we're right, after the seesaw is looking more like this and not like that, then when we, we can meet somewhere in between. You know what I mean? and have a true brotherhood with each other. But why would you give more to a person up here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Why would you make him more arrogant? Why would you bless him even more, make him more rich? How would that help the poor? And See what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. this setting in Israel where he's helping people... Say that again? If this setting is in Israel where he went to help people... Well, he said it's it was really the holy lands, like, you know, yes, Israel in that area, you know, Arabia, mm -hmm. Iraq, Iran, that whole area. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's really like all on one block. It's a whole bunch of different countries, like right in the same area. But yeah, Israel, Palestine, that area was where they were. Moses was in Egypt. He crossed over the guy, guys, uh, the Gaza Strip. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he was over in in uh, Mount Sinai, which is Arabia. Yeah. So, I've seen children of Israel. I was wondering when those going to tie into, because I've seen a lot of the different terms. That's why we get ready to go real quick with it. And see, the, the you know, the map is right there. I can put my hand on everything that you just said, my fingertip. You know what I mean? That's how close it is. I don't want to show it, but it's right here. Here's Africa, and here's 
Egypt, and here's Mount Sinai and Israel. <laughs> Where my finger was at. So, for the sake of time, family, we're going to jump down with, um, and we already talked about leprosy, but that's in uh, Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. And it's always good to read the scriptures because when you read the scriptures, you run right into something that uh, that will guide you right into something else. So it says right here, I'll start right up in verse 7. No, verse 8. Verse 7. It says, My servant Moses is not so. Because the Lord was angry with Miriam. It starts really at verse 1, but for the sake of time, we can't go to verse 1. But chapter 12, Numbers, God was angry because Mo, uh, uh, Aaron, which was Moses' brother, Aaron and Miriam was speaking against Moses. And God himself came down. And he checked them. He said, with prophets, you know, I come to them in dreams. I come to them with signs and symbols and stuff like that. Not so with Moses. With him, I come to him face to face. So how could you talk like this about a person that I met with face to face? That's deep. And that's chapter 33 in the book of uh, Exodus, where it says that God met with Moses face to face. Like a man talked to Moses face to face like a man talks to his friend. But everybody talks about the burning bush, but they don't talk about Exodus chapter 33. But verse 7 says, uh, My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Right? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead. You know, when you get dead, you get lighter. Right? Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. No matter how dark we are, we come out of our mother's womb light. You, I don't know if you ever heard it, but back in the day, they used to say, look at his ears. You can see how dark his ears is. That let you know how dark he's going to be. See what I'm saying? So this whole leprous thing is dealing with color. You know? So, we talked about the Muslims, Ishmael, Ishmael uh, um, represented Edom, the Edomites, because just like you had Sarah, which was the uh, Christians and Jews, you had Hagar, which is the Muslims, and then they gave birth to Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac is the Jews and Christians. Ishmael is dealing with the Muslims. So when you move a little further, you end up with Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau, because Isaac gave birth to a son named Jacob, who came out second, and Ishmael who came out first. I mean, not Ishmael, Esau. Esau is the father of the Edomites, and the Edomites are the Muslims. So that's what I'm saying. We all have our root neighbor in. You know what I mean? So this is the lineage. This is the layout. So the children of Israel, we dealt with that. The lost sheep that's in the house of Israel, we dealt with that. You know what I mean? So life will end with life and death. Right? And of course we have uh, Israel. In Israel was what Jacob's name was turned into. When you look at uh, Jacob and Esau, Jacob was fighting with the Lord, and when he fought with God, 
God asked Jacob, what is it? What is your name? And he said, Jacob, God told Jacob, no longer will your name be Jacob, but Israel, because you represent a nation of people who would always fight with God. So those are the people that Jesus was talking about who was killing the prophets. But back to life and death. What is life? What is death? Is it spiritual or is it physical that God wants us to pay attention to? Because we know Jesus raised the dead to life, right? So when you look at that word life, let's go back to the book of Genesis when you're dealing with Adam and Eve. And God is looking at Adam and Eve and he's telling Adam and Eve, the Muslim believe, to stay away from the tree that bears the knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. What happens? Eve eats the tree, uh, uh, eats the fruit from the tree and gives to her husband who was with her. And then they still be, they, they just find out that they're naked. Yeah. Naked really is just more symbolism. Not that they were walking around naked 6,000 years ago. It just means that if you're naked, you don't feel comfortable. If you're naked, you feel like you got something to hide. When they went against God, they had something to hide. You see what I'm saying? So when he said, where are you, Adam? He said, I was, and, and, and I heard you coming and I was naked, so I hid myself. You know what I mean? So he had something to hide. He started gathering fig leaves to cover his shame. Fig leaves represent excuses. Because every time you do something you're not supposed to do, you make a covering for yourself and your covering is what? A bunch of excuses. And you'll make an apron out of that and cover your shame. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it is with the word life and death. When they ate from that tree, they spiritually died, not physically died. The day they ate of that tree, they spiritually died. But they were not physically dead because Adam and Eve lived longer than all the prophets. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we can't look at that like it was physical death. So what kind of death are we talking about? It would have to be spiritual. And so it is with that word life. When you live in a life of a Gentile, a life of a lawless person, if you don't give your life to Christ and follow his prophets and messengers and allow the message to guide you closer to Allah, because we're closing now, you know, that is a life of death and you're on a real dangerous path that will lead you to a physical death very, very soon. You'll feel like death and then you'll eventually experience death. But if you follow the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and this is how we're going to close with our final thought because of the time. When you follow those teachings, that is literally life-giving teachings. That's why we call it the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. A man like Malcolm, when you look at the movie Malcolm X, he was living a life of death. And then that man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, raised him to life. And when he became alive, he never died again. And even though he's physically dead now, we still talk about him. Because he's still here. So that's the perfect way to end this uh, beautiful talk. We can do a part three, God willing, inshallah. We can go into more questions and everything. But for the sake of time, we're going to stop right here. If you want to jump in and, get, and let everybody see you. You know what I mean? You can come on in and jump in, oh, my son, with, and check out Stygian Films. Oh, yeah. They'll have you laughing and learning. Yeah. These are two brothers. You can sit right here. And y'all can take, you You can switch up. Yeah. But it's not Nasir. Cain and Abel today. Nasir. 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 Um, chapter 3, I believe it is. Got the Bible that I had to read for it. <laughs> but it's right there. But I like people to read. Yeah. And then we have Brother Jabril. Stygian Films. Spell that for me. S-T-Y-G-E-N. That's right. You, t you can YouTube that. But go ahead. What else were you going to say? I really found it crazy how everything tied in. I thought it was going to be like completely different. Like Everything's going to be a little separate. All over the place? Yeah, <laughs> God pulls it together, brother. Mm -hmm. So where does the where does those translations come from? The, the Yah and Allah. 
Oh, oh yeah, I, I got to touch on that. See, we we going a little over time, but it's all good. It's chapter four of the Cain and Abel story. Well, when we in church, and this is the final thought, when we in church, a lot of times under a false religion, you'll find yourself saying and doing things that you don't even know why you're doing it. Amen. And everybody say amen. Well, what does amen mean? Hallelujah. Idea. What does hallelujah mean? You're saying it the whole while you're in church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? I think they praise the Lord. Yeah, but that's what you're doing. Uh -huh. But it's an actual meaning to it. And what kind of word is it? Is it Hebrew? Is it Arabic? I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. It's a mixture. And this is what the translators do. It's really Aramaic. The way you say O oh in Arabic, you say Yah. And the way you say God, you say Allah. So if you, we naturally do this. We see something devastating. We say, oh, my God. Oh, God. So the angels were saying they were overwhelmed by the greatness of God. And they were saying, Ya Allah. Right. They took Ya Allah and read it backwards because we read in America from left to right. But all the Semitic languages, Hebrew and Aramaic, you read that from right to left. So when you say Ya Allah backwards, you're saying Allah Hu Ya. The you, you always use a vowel to connect the two words in Arabic. Ya is a word, Allah is a word, you use the you, and it becomes Allah who, Allah who ya. Give you another example for the Muslims, they know about this. We say Allah is the greatest. So you have Allah and you have greatest. We use a vowel, and that vowel is you, and you connect the two words. Allah who Akbar, God is the greatest. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You, you could use a E or a U, but you don't want to use the E because that changes the meaning. Allahi means my God. So you don't say my God is the greatest. No, you say the God is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. So that's where you get hallelujah from. And they didn't even know. It's really saying Ya Allah. Wow. Ain't that something? Yeah, I felt like you just ran a sample and reversed it. I didn't peep that. It's yeah. It's like a 1970s track. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what about you, son? Uh, Got anything to say before we close up? Um. Uh. And if you don't have nothing, that's cool. You know your father like the cover for you because I'm gonna take. We didn't. Uh, we didn't give the scripture. Revelation 19, verse one through six. Now it's funny because this is a little homework assignment for for you and the audience. We know that there's over a thousand different translations of the Bible. Here's some of them right here. You got the Jehovah Witness New World Translation. You have the New Jerusalem Bible. You have the um, ESV, the CEV, a bunch of different versions. Did you know that they play around with that word? Hallelujah. Some of them say hallelujah. Because they plan with the word. That was God's name in the Bible. Allah's name was in the Bible. So when you check out uh, Did Jesus Teach Islam Part 1, you'll see a lot more of that. And that's why I didn't really touch on it too much this time. But I'm glad you made me point to that Ya Allah. So it says right here, Revelation chapter 19, In these things I heard a great, no, and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying what? Hallelujah. Ain't that something? Allah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now I have to show you, I have to show you. Now the Jehovah Witness Bible is even funnier because they just flat out say praise job. <laughs> they just change the whole thing up. You know, they brothers and sisters because we catch them out in the street. We never want to refer to them in any other way other than respect because they do the work of God in the street. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we differ when it comes to that. And it's a small difference because God has many names, many attributes. Now look at what it says here. What's that word? Hallelujah. And it ain't Yah. You see what they did? Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They playing games. That was the name of Allah in your Bible and the translators and interpreters took it out. So we can stop with that, brother. All right. You know what I mean? We can go right there because we're going to get this devil. They're very angry right now, and I always tell the young people to be careful because we're living in a day of truth right now, and it makes them lose their minds. They can't live like that. It makes them go berserk. As long as we were deceived, they were okay. 
So we're going to end this video with that. You know what I mean? We're going to leave you like we came before you with the greeting words of peace and the Arabic language, which is our ancient original language, we say, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And you can say peace be unto you. Uh, peace be unto you. There you go. <laughs>